I wish you all a very happy and a prosperous new year to everyone who joined us here and even those who are watching us online. And uh, may this year bring joy, peace, happiness, and prosperity, prosperity in your lives. Uh, before I start my sermon for today, today we wanted to have short service. Uh, I'll try my best to keep it short. And uh, <laughs> some heads are nodding uh, horizontally saying, uh, uh, no, Pravin can never do that. <laughs> But I'm truly, I'm sincerely trying. Um, before I start my sermon, I would like to call upon uh, our uh, Asia Superintendent, Pastor Daniel Zechariah, to come forward and uh, pray uh, for this, um, the couple, I mean, going to be couple, Prem and Bijita, they got uh, engaged this month, 23rd. Congratulations to them on behalf of church. And we would like to take this moment to offer a prayer of blessing uh, for them. So I would like to ask uh, Pastor Dan to come forward to offer a prayer. Thank you, Praveen, Pastor Praveen. And uh, wow, uh, <laughs> I didn't realize behind all that singing, there was a romance going on. <laughs> but we are so, so happy that... Uh, you have been engaged, and not only that, you have given us the privilege and the blessing of announcing it here in our fellowship. Uh, we certainly consider you as part of our fellowship. So uh, thank you for taking the time to come here, and of course for the beautiful number that you gave to us. I just want to, before we have a prayer blessing, uh, there is a priestly blessing that is written in the book of Numbers, and I think it is even put to song. But I felt that uh, as a congregation, we would like to bless you. And uh, what better words to use than the words of uh, our prophet Moses as he was blessing Israel. Uh, and this is a priestly blessing. And may I? Yeah. So if you can come forward. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, right. And may, I, may we as a congregation shower this blessing upon you. And uh, Praveen, don't run away. We need you here as a pastor. So um, the blessing goes like this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And as you move forward, uh, we certainly pray that God's loving, gracious presence be with you. Uh, if Pastor Barvin can come forward and uh, we just lay hands and, and uh, join us as we pray. <sighs> loving, gracious Father, what a privilege it is for us this morning to be able to uh, bring this beautiful couple uh, Vijita and uh, Prem, who have been such a great blessing for us, Lord. We are so uh, happy and we rejoice in your, before your throne of grace to bring them for and ask you for a very, very special blessing. Gracious Lord, as they now look forward to uh, the institution that you created, the highest, most intimate relationship of holy matrimony. We ask that your loving presence, your guidance, your blessings in every way be upon them, that you will continue to lead them, provide for them, as they have dedicated themselves into your service, bringing the gospel in music and song. We pray, Lord, that uh, you will open doors for them that they may be witness for you as a couple uh, and that the name of Jesus will continue to be glorified through their voices and through their skills of using the instruments. We are grateful, Father, for them. We commit them into your hands. May your uh, continued provision be upon them, take care of them as we bless them as uh, as 
pastors and elders in this church, we are so happy that they can be part of our fellowship. We commit them and uh, their ministry of uh, catering to the Christian world through their music that they bring great glory your, uh, for your name. And so we do this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, one more thing, it's been a while we didn't have Pauline with us and she was sick last month but uh, we are so happy that God could, uh, uh, God uh, healed you and you could join us and celebrate with us uh, uh, in this uh, New Year service. Having said that, I would like to move into my sermon and uh, my sermon title is just 2024. Nothing much, not very, uh, not any interesting title, just uh, uh, 2024 a number so it's a new year now and 2023 had uh, a great I mean in my life it had been a great blessing and I believe it is be it's been the same to you and we had our own ups and downs and God had been faithful in our lives so because of that we could uh, go through the entire year and uh, not just cross another year, add another year, but we prospered, I do believe. All of us might have prospered. So 2023 is over. We are so grateful to God for his blessing and presence and great, uh, his uh, faithfulness in our lives. And um, 2024, we really don't know what is... Uh, Sorry. The 2023 folder is closed. We don't know what is ahead of us, what is stored for us in 2024. I was just praying and thinking about uh, the new year. I'm, I'm also getting used to this uh, uh, preaching on these festival days <laughs> as a uh, pastor. And uh, it's always such a big challenge for me to bring an appropriate message uh, for all our members. And I was praying to God, teach me, Lord, what should I speak to our congregation? And then I came up, I mean, God, I believe God has inspired me to share this message with you. And uh, before I speak what God inspired me to share it with you, I would like to ask you a simple question. And, uh, but let me tell you, my question may be quite uh, uh, disappointing or uh, discouraging, especially for New Year spirits, people who will be super excited about the New Year. So please forgive me if it is discouraging to you in that sense. But uh, the question is this, which has been in my heart from a long time. Every new year comes, the new year comes, a little bit excitement, and uh, January 2nd onwards, it is the same thing. <laughs> 2023 had been. January 2nd, 2024 is going to be the same to me. In, in, a, in a similar manner, uh, I, uh, you know, uh, I uh, passed 34 new years. So I always had this question, really does New Year bring anything new to us? So I have a small menti poll for you, okay? And you can scan, you can scan it and you can join. Uh, the link has been shared in the church WhatsApp group. The link has been shared in the church WhatsApp group. You will come across a question. Please, this time I'm not asking any answers, but this time I'm asking you to poll, so you can be free. <laughs> okay, please uh, participate in the poll. Otherwise, uh, you 
in the church WhatsApp group. The link has been shared. And once again, Roshan, can you please put the scan uh, code once, QR code once? Or you can scan this QR code and I request you all to participate. Yeah. And you will come across a question. Please do answer it. If uh, Roshan, can you please project that? Does new year, does, does new calendar year bring anything new in your life? Any newness? It is interesting to see the polls. I request you all to participate. Till now, 18 people voted. Does new calendar year bring any newness in your life? Yeah, keep your answers coming. Okay, I guess um, these are the polls that are right in front of you. Oh, still few are coming. It's wonderful. Okay, 10 of you have said yes. New Year is bringing, uh, New Year is bringing newness in, li in my life. And somebody, the no person may be someone like me. <laughs> not very much, not so exciting. <laughs> New Year is also just like any other day, it's just a calendar. And some of you did not understand whether yes or no. So, maybe. <laughs> and said, uh, maybe. Yeah, more and more uh, skeptical votes. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much uh, for all of you to, for participating. Does New Year truly make anything new? Does New Year truly bring anything new or make everything new? We are celebrating this New Year year after year. Right? And you can introspect your own lives. But there, there was a philosopher in the Bible who was very famous and he also celebrated so many new years and this is what he said. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. For this philosopher, there is nothing new under the sun. Whatever happened in the past, the same thing is, ha is happening now and is going to happen in the future. I guess you all can guess who this philosopher is. Right? The wise Solomon. Thank you for participating. So for him, there is nothing new under the sun. And there is another writer, he said like this, there are only patterns Patterns on top of patterns. Patterns that affect other patterns. Patterns hidden by patterns. Patterns within patterns. If you watch close, history does nothing but repeat itself. History does nothing but it repeats it repeat itself. What we call chaos is just pattern we haven't recognized. And what we call random is just pattern 
we can decipher what we can't understand we call it you know nonsense what we can't read we call it gibberish that's what i do with the greek and hebrew names this is no free will sorry there is no free will there are no variables so everything repeats so there are certain patterns in life there are certain patterns in the world certain patterns even in the design fashion especially you all can uh, <coughs> witness what had been in the past 15 20 years ago same thing comes back retro now people are liking retro bars and in what you will do in retro bar retro cafes you go they serve idli dosa they don't serve something <laughs> interesting <laughs> okay <laughs> so everything is coming back and uh, forth uh, that is what uh, this author named uh, check fall sorry check falanuk this is what gibberish called that's what he said i don't know how to read his name so he he this is what he said patterns patterns they will be repeating so if we we'll, we are celebrating new years so let us look at a short let us look at the history of new year a little bit then we will be able to connect to what i'm trying to say the oldest recorded new year festivities date back to 2000 bc not now 2000 bc in, b before christ itself new year celebrations were there especially in um, uh, mesopotamia they were celebrating and the festival is called akitu that is the festival the festival of crowning of a new king or reaffirmation of loyalty to the current king it is the first new moon after the spring equinox so in the in 2000 bc the babylonians and mesopotamian mesopotamians they were celebrating the new year that they were celebrating the new year to affirm their uh, affirm their uh, what we call uh, loyalty they affirm their loyalty towards their king or in uh, uh, establishment of new other king and they used to celebrate it and this new year it comes in the uh, first new moon after the spring equinox which is mostly like march uh, 20 25 somewhere okay and you know when indian new year start ugadi in telugu we call it pongal yeah, not pongal right in tamil what they call i don't know in, in telugu we call it ugadi it has various names in india but same festival has been celebrated okay in india also the new year is celebrated somewhere during the first moon of the uh, uh what we call spring equinox and most of the calendars in the world they celebrate new year on the same day so most of the calendars in the world start after the spring equinox except greek and these greek calendar starts in autumn equinox somewhere the new year which we are talking it falls so julian calendar which is very much influenced by greek and they also celebrate new year in march 25th that is in the spring equinox uh, so julian calendar they were celebrating new year on 24th Gregorian, Gregorian calendar, which is which we are using now, which has been um, uh, developed by Pope Gregory, and uh, that starts from January first. Okay. Having said that, January first, where is how the ancient Greeks, Romans, and ancient people were celebrating the New Year? How are they celebrating? What are they signifying? like you know in the rome it is said the uh, the rome dedicated january 1st and the new year day to the god janus that is where the name january came from janus janus was a god of beginnings and transitions in roman mythology and presided over passages doors gates and endings as well as in the traditional period uh, such as from war to peace he was usually usually depicted as having two faces looking at opposite opposite ways one towards the past the other towards the future 
Okay, I, I preached the same, I shared the same wordings in the last year also. I have shown you Janus picture. Janus has two heads. One head is facing towards the future, the other head is facing towards the past. So think about, uh, look, at ba look back at the past and then look forward unto the future. That is a message, that is the message they were carrying with the celebration of New Year. Think about the last year, think about the coming year. And uh, Rome, they, they, they wanted to celebrate New Year as a feast of uh, Caesar Augustus as well. But for some reasons, it did not, uh, uh, it did not establish. So, according to, but according to this Julian calendar, many of these Christmas Christian festivals were f uh, falling on wrong days. That is the reason Pope Gregory, he thought, we need to revive the calendar, and he brought this uh, Gregory calendar, which, uh, which we are following now. And this calendar has been introduced in 1570. And from the beginning, everybody did not accept. Only the Roman Catholic Church accepted this. And in 1752, England, Church of England, and uh, those, those were the people who were ruling most of the world those days, they accepted. And you know, where the last people to accept Gregorian calendar, the calendar which we are using, is Saudi Arabia. They accepted Gregorian calendar, the calendar which we are using in 2019. Yeah, <laughs> 2019 they accepted. I don't know how they were communicating and all. But Nepal, Nepal accepted around uh, 10 years ago. They were having their own calendar. So in 2019, Saudi Arabia accepted this calendar. Because of that reason, you might have come across Christmas and New Year days in different days. You know, we Protestant Catholics and all, we celebrate, ev evangelicals celebrate Christmas on 25th December. Orthodox people celebrate their Christmas on January 8th. January 8th. Okay, they, they don't celebrate on December 25th. And March 25th, they celebrate it as a New Year. And they named it Annunciation, uh, Annunciation of Jesus. Mary, uh, sorry, the angel appeared to Mary, the mother of Jesus, announced about the birth of Jesus. That is where they started the new year. So, look what is happening. The Orthodox people, they want to start new year with Jesus. Announce, uh, announcement of Jesus' birth to Mary. They wanted to center Jesus as the center of the calendar i don't know why it came okay and christian liturgical calendar which has been started which goes very much in alignment with the gregorian calendar it starts with first advent our pastor also taught so the christian calendar starts with first advent and the world, the calendar world which is using, it starts with January 1st. And they celebrate this new year thinking about the past and about the future. So this is where I was inspired. We are Christians and we follow Christian calendar. Why don't we keep Jesus as the center of new year? Why should we think this only past, present, future, and where some changes we do, progression we make in the life as a center when we know that Christ is the center of our lives. We need to make Christ as a center of our new year. That is the message I preached last year, and this what I'm going to speak now is built on what I have shared pre in, the pre in the last new year. Making Jesus as the center of the New Year. So, uh, from 1568, this particular day, the eighth day after the birth of Jesus, which is December 25th, which is considered as the circumcision of the Lord, the feast of circumcision of the Lord. You know, you you many of you are from various church backgrounds. If you if you are from Catholic or if you are from Anglican or if you are from Methodist and all, you just think about what will happening uh, during the New Year. All the New Years we will be reading the same passage which we read. That Mary and Joseph, uh, sorry, Joseph has taken the uh, born baby Jesus to the temple and they got him 
circumcised on the eighth day. Because all these calendars, they have Jesus as the center. So I don't want that we GCI India should be celebrating New Year just as changing of season or changing of some number, calculative numbers or some calendar or timings which we are talking about. But we will be celebrating Jesus in the new year, having him as a center of our lives. That is the focus of my message today and this particular feast it was called in 1568 to 1960 as the circumcision of the lord or it is also called octave of the nativity octave means eighth day nativity is the birth of jesus we know octave of the uh, nativity and then this has been changed because they i don't know why they changed the name and they changed the name to the solemnity solemnity of mary mary the mother of jesus or it is called the Feast of the Holy Mother of God. From Catholic background, you may be, people can relate to it. And then, it has been changed again. In the modern days, it is called the Feast of the Holy Family. New Year, they are not celebrating according to the Christian calendar as some changing of season, but because of the birth of Jesus and circumcision of Jesus Christ. So that is what the scripture is about we read. The parents of Jesus have taken him to the temple and on eighth day he was circumcised. So what we are going to do is we are going to focus on this verse. Jesus being circumcised and how it relates to us considering today as new year. Okay. So Luke chapter 2 verse 21 says, when the, eight day, when the eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The circumcision of Jesus. Why Jesus has to be circumcised? What does the circumcision of Jesus teach us? The primary message the circumcision of Jesus teaches is that Jesus is fully man. As our pastor reminded us yesterday also, Jesus is fully man. He is not just appearing as a man. He is truly a fully man. What is the proof? He got a cut. He has true flesh and blood. And Jesus is fully human like you and me. We are not worshipping a God who cannot relate to us, who, is, no, who cannot understand the weaknesses of this flesh. But we are worshipping a Lord who came in flesh, who can relate to you and me because he is in flesh. He is one like us. He is not like, you know, there were times I was having conversations with some people and talking about the New Testament. It was These were my early days of uh, Christian ministry. And then you know the uh, Sermon on the Mount very well, which is so strict and very difficult. While I was talking to them, I was so furious, I mean, very rigorously arguing with them and saying, if it is written in the New Testament and the, it, it is said that we have to obey it, we have to obey. And many people used to say, Jesus was able to obey because he is God. Many a times we think Jesus was able to obey and do this and that because he was God. But reality is this message tells, the circumcision of Jesus tells, Jesus was not just God, he is also 100% human. And he accomplished all these things in his humanity. So Jesus together as a fully God and fully man, he accomplished everything. So the circumcision of Jesus teaches that Jesus has, God, or God has taken human flesh and he is like someone like you and me. So what are we going to see in heaven? Someone like you and me being seated on the heaven. Whom are you going to interact in heaven? Someone like you and me. I used to think heaven is something, it's going to be so spiritual. It is spiritual, of course, to an extent. It is spiritual only like lights, you know, on the head, some kind of lamp kind of things. Okay, some spirits will be communicating to the other spirits. We don't need to tell what I have in my heart to my wife in heaven. She would be knowing it already. So no, there is no miscommunication in heaven, all spirit communication. Okay. 
I used to think that, but now the picture has changed. Even if I go to heaven, I don't need to uh, think in these directions. I can, because I'm going to see Jesus, who is just like me and you, you and me. I'm going to have uh, conversations with him. And I'm expecting to have barbecue with Jesus in heaven. Are you, are you not? I am. Yes, we can have. Because Jesus is, Jesus had breakfast after his resurrection. He made barbecue fish. He had, and we can have with him, you know. So kind of imaginations goes on, you know, because it tells us that Jesus has become a flesh. He came into flesh and blood just like you and me. He's someone like you and me. So freely we can go to him and talk to him. We are going to have a better and happy life. And some people say Jesus became a human and after his resurrection he became something new and he is no more a human. No. Apostle Paul reminds us in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 where he says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. Jesus, he has taken human flesh not only for the incarnation for 33 and a half years, but he has taken human flesh forever. Can you imagine, you know, uh, Rishi Sanak became Prime Minister of England, right? How many Indians were proud of him? Kamala Harris, right, has become the Vice President of USA. How many Indians were proud of it? How many, what news channels were saying? Our Indian people, they went to US and UK, there also, Hamara Raj Chalta, right? Now, once upon a time, the Indians were under the British rule. For 200 years, they were slaves. Now, our people are the lords over <laughs> British. Are we not saying that? Yes. We all say, kind of thing. Can we take, can we go to the tree and say, you know what? God became a man. He came in flesh like you and me. Similar thing. He had given a great privilege to all of us and by taking flesh and blood. That is the message of the feast of the circumcision of the Lord. Jesus has taken a flesh like you and me, not just for 33 years and forever he is going to remain. Can, you, can, I, can I add one more point to this? You know what? God doesn't want to be God in his spirit form. God doesn't want to continue his existence as he is. He wanted to continue as his existence as you are. That is the message of circumcision here. First circumcision of Jesus, the first gospel message is this. God doesn't want to be God as he is. He wanted to be God as you and me are. He is God of our our God, Kalbath, he says, God doesn't want to be God without you and me. He wants to be God of his people. So that is the message we can get from the circumcision of Jesus Christ. So as we enter into the new year, let us be confident because God took on the flesh and he can relate to each and everything that we go through and what we went through in 2023 and what we are going to face in 2024 and we can go to him and, kind of, and pray to him about anything and everything and he can say I had been your place I can understand anything and everything that you said you may have fears about future he can understand it you have so many aspirations about future he can understand it you may have regret about your past he can understand it you may have failures haunting you. He can understand it. In each and every aspect of life, he can relate to you. That is the message of Jesus, circumcision. And may this message give us a push for the new year. Let us not celebrate new year just for the change of the season. Let us celebrate Christmas, uh, sorry, new year because Jesus is one like you and me. He can understand us. And God is starting it new and making it new by changing his very existence like you and me. He remained God and he wanted to continue it as a man. The feast of circumcision, it's also called naming of the Lord. Okay. And uh, Luke chapter 2, 21, the same words, it reads, when the eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called 
Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. In many houses, when we came for carols, I was bringing this message to uh, you. If you read Matthew, the angel was proclaiming that you, the virgin shall bear a child and they shall call him Emmanuel. <laughs> Emmanuel, right? Did Joseph obey God and uh, named him Emmanuel? <laughs> no, <laughs> he named him Jesus. Of course, angel also said to name him Jesus also. What is the connection between these two? Here, the New Testament author Matthew, he is playing game with the words. He quotes one prophecy which says, he shall be called Emmanuel. And then next verse he, write, he says, Jesus was called, sorry, he was, the baby was called Jesus. Emmanuel, Jesus. Both are same. Emmanuel is Jesus. <coughs> you know, the right word for Jesus, the true Hebrew name for Jesus is Joshua. Joshua, yeah, Joshua, Yeshua. Hmm? Joshua is the name. Joshua means Jehovah shall save. And in other words, Joshua means, actually true meaning of Joshua is Yahweh is salvation. What is the name Jesus said and angel said? He shall save his people, so he shall be called Jesus. This salvation is not something he is going to do or he is going to achieve, but this salvation he is going to bring to us being Emmanuel. Jesus is not winning some salvation for you and me, my brethren. His very presence itself is the salvation. What is brightness? Brightness is nothing but the presence of light in darkness. Right? What is life? Life is nothing but presence of, of uh, life into death. So Jesus entered into our lives. And what is the proof? Circumcision is the proof. He is with us as you and me. Because he is Emmanuel, he is Jesus to us. That is the message, uh, the feast of circumcision or, or naming the Lord carries. With that confidence, the early church and, and the church from 15th century has taken a decision that we are going to celebrate the new year with the confidence that Jesus is with us. And he is our salvation. His very presence itself is the salvation. I don't know what problems you are going to face in this year. I don't know what trials you may face. What difficulties you may face. But let me tell you my brethren. Jesus is with you. That means your problem has been already solved. Jesus is with you. Your sufferings were already resolved. Jesus is with you. Your troubles are already taken care of I don't know what is ahead but I know one thing for sure you are not going to face a new year or a day or a moment in your life where Jesus is not going to be with you this I can tell you with assurance because that is what the Bible tells he promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us he is Emmanuel our very salvation solution for everything Maybe that may be the word how we modern people can understand. Joshua is the solution of God for us. So let us look, at, look ahead of the, for the new year with the confidence that God is with us. And <coughs> Luke chapter 2 verse 21, same verse I am reading. It says, and, the, uh, and when the eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, the name given by the angels before he was conceived in the womb. Circumcision. Uh, many must be uncomfortable. Why this fellow is bringing circumcision on the New Year? My wife was uncomfortable. Are you truly going to say circumcision on New Year Day? I said, yes, I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk about it on the New Year Day also. <laughs> Why? Because circumcision is not a small thing. Circumcision is the most significant covenant in the Old Testament. The most significant covenant. And through this covenant, God has promised to bless the bless entire world. You all know the story of circumcision and I don't want to go into that. And Jesus on the eighth day being circumcised, he has he participated from our side. 
from God's side, God is faithful to accomplish what he made covenant. And from our side, Jesus being circumcised and he is fulfilling our side of the covenant. So you and me don't need to be worried about fulfilling the covenants of the Lord. And you and me, are some, many a times we are scared whether we are fulfilling everything that God commanded us to do or not. And here is the message that tells Jesus has done it. For you and me, as you and me. What is the proof? On the eighth day, he was circumcised. The circumcision of Jesus tells us that Jesus has accomplished everything for you and me. Having said that, have you ever seen the word circumcision? Actually, in, the, uh, in English, it was not translated properly. And many a times we read and say, the, circumc uh, sorry, the covenant was made. Right? The covenant, the covenant was made, that's how we use. But in the Hebrew language, the no one can make covenant. Covenant will not be made. Covenant will be cut. <laughs> cut a covenant. That is the phrase. Cut a covenant. Like we say, cut ticket. Right? It is cut a covenant, not make a covenant. Why this cutting is so <laughs> important? And the Hebrew word for it is karat uh, berit which means to cut a covenant. Covenant is always established with a cut. You talk, read any covenant in the Bible. Every covenant has a cut. It's with one cut, uniting two. So if um, anyone is making covenant with others, they take an animal, they cut it, and with their agreement, they come together. So this cut reminds us about bringing together. The cut Jesus went through is going is talking about bringing God and humans together, and uh, that's what it is talking about. And you know when is the first time the blood of Jesus was shed on the day of his circumcision? First time the blood of Jesus was shed on the day of circumcision. So this eighth day, the circumcision of Jesus is the mini mini message of the entire gospel. Jesus was cut so that humanity and divinity can come together. Jesus was cut. Jesus under, underwent this cut and suffering because of that you and I are united to God. That is what this message, this circumcision is talking about, which has been proclaimed on the New Year Day. And which is a symbolic for symbol symbolic for what Jesus is going to do in the future. Okay, all things are made. So Jesus uh, suffering the cut brought union between us and God. Ultimate cut which took place on the Golgotha, where he suffered. Through his sufferings, he brought humanity close to God. That is what this circumcision of Jesus is talking about. And all things are made new with shedding of blood. And through the cross of Jesus, he made everything new. And this is a symbolic message uh, explained through the circumcision of Jesus Christ. First time his blood was cut and everything is made new. That's why oh, the first message of Jesus is, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. In other words, the message is this. Repent. Things are not going to be in the same old way. All things have become new. So you change your mind. Everything changed now. So you change your mind. The world has been changed completely. The only thing that is not changed is your mind. So change it. That is a gospel message. Jesus preached. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. Everything has been changed. Why? Jesus was cut on the day of his circumcision and ultimately on Good Friday. Because Jesus suffered, we brought in union with God and we are made <coughs> new. The feast reminds us to live in the reality of <coughs> our union with Christ because of his incarnation and the cut he suffered through the circumcision and crucifixion. My brethren, if a new year is just changing of calendar year to look backward and forward, it is just going to be just any of these pagan new years. 
if our new year is just 2023 is gone 2024 is coming if it is only that much we are celebrating just like the romans were celebrating janus what makes us christians is the focus and center that is jesus jesus makes everything different new year makes sense with the one who is the center of the history and he is the center of the calendar and he is the center of life itself and if our celebration of your new year makes only sense if jesus is the center if it is only changing of the seasons we all know what wise solomon said there is nothing new under the sun nothing can be brought new everything is going to be repeated the patterns are going to be repeated over and over again christ is the only thing that happened in the history that is not repeated and it will not be repeated look at the history wars genocides anything you talk about everything has been repeated right incarnation of jesus is the only thing it is not repeated and it will never be repeated is there anyone who could claim that i am god i am taking flesh and uh, survived life and proved that they are he is god is there any person in this world who did exactly like jesus no one not even one in the last 2000 years also so jesus is the only thing that happened new in this world everything is repeated everything is repeated so in this new year if jesus is not there the new year is not going to be a new year it is a repeated year nothing new under the sun christ alone makes all things new as he said in isaiah chapter 43 uh, verse 19 behold i do a new thing what is this new thing he is talking about in isaiah he is talking about the incarnation in other words the cut of jesus i am going to make all the i am going to do a new thing now it shall spring forth shall you not know it i will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert that's what god says he did all things new through jesus not by flipping the calendar and he makes all things new with his very presence that's what we can find in if you read isaiah chapter 43 entire chapter it will be talking about the presence of the lord and in verse 19 he said behold i am going to make a new thing with what his very presence what is his very presence emmanuel same god with us which has been proved to us uh on the day of circumcision and birth lamentation chapter 3 verse 22 to 23 says the steadfast of steadfast love of the lord never ceases his mercies never come to an end they are new every morning great is your faithfulness o lord the mercies of the lord steadfast love of the lord will never be ceasing and his mercies are new every man jesus is the only person who used and god is the only one referring jesus and said new every morning solomon said oh there is nothing new under the sun god says everything and every day it is going to be new why because jesus is in us christ is the only one who makes all things new and will make all things new every day If you read Colossians, Second Corinthians chapter three, verse eighteen, as much as we look unto Him, we will be confirmed to His image, and uh, his Scripture encourages us to renew our mind every day. Okay, Jesus is the one; He is in the business of making everything new by His very presence in our lives, and uh, He makes all things new with His mercies and by His indwelling. through the holy spirit that's why ephesians chapter 4 verse 24 it says put on the new man which was created by god you know put on the new man which was created according to god in true righteousness and holiness you are created newly if that being new creation is not part of new year it's not a new year that's what i would like to try encourage and bring the message bible tells us Christ should be the center and he made all things new in fact he made you new 
New year is not ch new ch change in calendar. New year is about newness in you. I ask the question, does any calendar bring, you know, does calen calendar year bring any newness in your life? The scripture from, uh, from scripture, this is what I can tell you. The calendar is going to bring nothing new. Jesus is the only one who brings everything new. He already made you new. So that's why you can look for 2023 with new aspirations, not because we flip the calendar. What happens? Just number dates and numbers change. Nothing else. But when Jesus enters, not numbers, everything change. So the good news of the feast of the Holy Family or circumcision of the Lord or scripture is this. Since Christ has come, every day is a new day by his indwelling Holy Spirit. And Romans 6 verse, uh, I'm about to close. Uh, Romans 6 verse 4, it says, We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the day, dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. How can you experience something new in your life? By walking along with Jesus. And this you cannot do by yourself. This you can do only you finding yourself in Jesus. I was buried with Christ. Dead, uh, sorry, I was dead with Christ. Buried with Christ. Raised again from dead with Christ. In identifying ourselves in Jesus only, we will be able to walk the life in the newness. But nothing is going to bring new. Through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, and through baptism, we can, we can become a new man. And in Revelation chapter 21, verse 5, again, God is uh, uh, affirming us with this message. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Can you promise that 2024 is going to bring newness in your life? For me, I'm not, I cannot promise. I don't know. But John promises here. And he says, I will make all things new. Write down, for these words are trustworthy. Surely newness is going to come. Solomon is going to be surprised. Oh, I haven't seen this pattern. There is something new under the sun. Solomon is going to say that. And truly it is going to happen. And that's what Jesus said. This is a trustworthy saying. All newness is ahead of us. Not just flipping the, not while flipping the calendar, by, by the coming of the Lord. So in conclusion, what I would like to say, let us celebrate the new year as Christians, having Christ as a center, not just for flipping the calendar, looking backward or looking forward as the drivers do, okay? But looking unto Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our race, faith. So let us remember the incarnation of Jesus. He became one with us, one among us, and uh, our Savior. In Him, we are new creation. He in us makes every day new. And He, sorry, in Him, we are a new creation. He in us, by His indwelling, He makes every day new. And He in His coming makes the world completely new again. That is a message for this new year from the circumcision of Jesus. Having Christ as a center, we can truly enter into 2024 AD. You know what is AD? AD, BC, AD, BC before Christ. AD is after death, right? No, <laughs> AD is not after death. Anno Domini, the Latin word. Anno Domini means the year of the Lord. So, I was thinking about this 2024 AD, New Year. It is not a New Year if it is not AD. That is the message I wanted to, I want our church to know. 2024, it should be AD. The Anno Domini, the year of the Lord. This is not some year of somebody. This is the year of the Lord. It happens only when we are centered on Jesus. And no Domini, the year of the Lord. The new year truly becomes new if we recognize it. it recognize it is the year of the Lord. And 
Christ as the center. How can we participate in this new year? Christ has made everything new. And how can we participate in this new year? He is participating in the new covenant he already made. Participating in his cut. And participating uh, in the newness which he, which he accomplished through the cut he underwent. Participating in the new covenant he made by being cut and giving himself unto us by shedding his blood and giving his body unto us. Complete newness in life is possible only through two things and these two things happen in Jesus. Remember, you know, come, uh, if you talk about great newness in life, there are only two things that make your life completely new. Number one is birth. It can be your birth or it can be birth of your child. After the birth of my child, life has been changed completely to me. You know, and when I don't have office also, I'm so busy. I don't know what. <laughs> birth of child makes it complete life completely new. Number two, a covenant makes completely new. You know what I'm talking about. Marriage. You made a covenant <laughs> in marriage. These are the only two things in life. Makes life completely new. Why am I saying? You may say, oh, my job was different. This job is different. And whatever you may talk, my business was different. But let me tell you, in all your businesses and your activities and everything, you will be focusing on yourself. But on these two things only, birth of your child or mar your marriage, you will be thinking about others. <laughs> right? So, only these two things are going to make everything new. A birth and a covenant. So, birth of Jesus has been taken place on 25th of December. And the second thing that can bring newness into life is the covenant. And it has begun with the circumcision and the cut Jesus underwent. Because Jesus was born and because Jesus suffered the cut and we are made new. We participate in the newness and the new covenant through communion. If somebody could help uh, to get the communion elements here. As a church together, we remember the suffering Jesus underwent and the cut Jesus underwent, which made everything new, which made the covenant, the new covenant. And we participate into the newness of life that has been brought by this covenant. So the elements are in front of us. The elements are in front of us. Let us introspect our lives. Thank you so much. Um, let us remember the communion is in front of us. And uh, Bible says we need to participate in worthy manner. What is a worthy manner? Many times we think what we do, what we what didn't do, we fail these and all. The worthy manner of participating into the communion of Jesus is looking unto Jesus. Having Jesus as the center in simple words. Having Jesus as the center. Let us participate in the newness he accomplished for us. Let's pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy son Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways. To the glory of thy name. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I would like to proclaim that all your sins are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you have become a new creation. You are a new creation, created for newness. Let us come and participate in the table. This is a table, this is not of the church, but of the Lord. It is for those who love him. And it is for those who want to love him. And those who want to love him more. This is for those who have much faith. And this is for those who are struggling with faith. Who do not have much faith.
and it is for those who come here often and it is for those who don't come here often but it is for you also and it is for those who are broken it is for those who are spiritually weak it is for those who are spiritually poor the substantial bread of jesus which brings the life into our lives substantial life of jesus it will bring a substantial life of jesus into our lives so you who have uh, you who have tired following jesus and you who have failed because it is the lord who invites you and it is his will that those who want him should meet him here the lord is inviting you please come join us if all of you got your elements may i request you to stand on your feet in reverence towards the lord and participate in the substantial food which brings the newness into our lives brethren the body of our lord jesus christ which was given for you preserve your body and soul unto your lasting take and eat this in remembrance that christ died for you and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving the blood of jesus christ which was shed for you preserve your body and your soul unto your lasting life bring this in remembrance that christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful